Elizabeth Smart helps launch new technology to find missing persons. The kidnapping survivor and child safety activist is partnering with Portland-based tech company Q5ID to launch the Guardian app nationwide. Utah police sabotaged efforts Elizabeth Smart's family made to identify and locate Brian David Mitchell, the handyman ultimately convicted in Smart's kidnapping, according to Smart family spokesperson and author Chris Thomas. Smart, now 35, was abducted at age 14 from her Salt Lake City home by Brian David Mitchell and his wife, Wanda Barzi, on June 5, 2002, and located alive 20 years ago Sunday, on March 12, 2003. Smart's younger sister, Mary Catherine, was in the same room as Smart when she was kidnapped. It was in October 2002 about four, four and a half months after Elizabeth went missing. And a lot of people don't realize, it was dark in the room that night when Elizabeth was abducted, and Mary Catherine did not get a good look at the individual, but she heard the voice, and it was familiar to her, Thomas told the Fox News Rundown podcast. And while she was reading the Guinness Book of World Records in October, all of a sudden, she remembered, hey, it was that man Emmanuel, who worked on the roof one afternoon. Elizabeth Smart reflects on 20 years since Salt Lake City abduction, I will never be who I was. Elizabeth Smart at her home in Wasatch County, Utah, on March 8, 2023. 20 years ago she was freed from a nine-month-long kidnapping. Mitchell, who remains in prison, referred to himself as Emmanuel and helped the Smart family with odd jobs around their home. Utah suspect charged with murder of missing 19-year-old man nearly a year after his disappearance. There was a lot of tension, Thomas recalled. After Mary Catherine had that epiphany, the family, of course, immediately contacted law enforcement, and police were very reticent to come forward with that information. Smart was abducted at age 14 from her Salt Lake City home by Brian David Mitchell and his wife, Wanda Barzi, on June 5. 2002, and located 20 years ago Sunday, on March 12, 2003. Sandy City Police already had a person of interest at the time and were hesitant to change that narrative, Thomas explained on the podcast and in his new book. Unexpected, the backstory of finding Elizabeth Smart and growing up in the culture of an American religion. It wasn't until February that the Smart family finally came out with the information, and then the police sabotaged it, he said. They told the media that I had concocted the story, and that they'd investigated the guy, and they didn't think there was much there. Brian David Mitchell leaves the federal courthouse after Elizabeth Smart testified, for the first time, in a competency hearing for her kidnapper on October 1, 2009, in Salt Lake City, Utah. Police were saying Thomas was trying to get Smart back into the news he told the rundown. New Gabby Petito lawsuit filing reveals Brian Laundrie's mental and emotional threat weeks before murder. Smart's parents, Ed and Lois Smart, were struggling to hold on to hope as media interest in their daughter's disappearance and the facts of her case waned. Ed Smart and Thomas traveled to New York City in 2002 to get interviews with national media, but John Walsh was the only person who seemed interested at the time, Thomas said. Smart's parents, Ed and Lois Smart, were struggling to hold on to hope as media interest in their daughter's disappearance and the facts of her case waned. Lois had to let go, Thomas recalled in an interview with Fox 13, Salt Lake City, and really, at one point, she went up into the canyon and buried her badge with Elizabeth's picture on it and said goodbye. Utah family of recent college graduate killed by police during traffic stop demands answers, stonewalling us. Meanwhile, Elizabeth was scheming ways to escape Mitchell's captivity. Mitchell was a so-called street preacher who thought it was his destiny to marry child brides. Lois had to let go, Thomas recalled in an interview with Fox 13, Salt Lake City, and really, at one point, she went up into the canyon and buried her badge with Elizabeth's picture on it and said goodbye. We were in New York trying to do interviews that morning. No one wanted to do those. John Walsh was the only person that would take the story up. Elizabeth, on the other side, was absolutely genius. She went to Brian David Mitchell and said, 
Hey, I've had this revelation from God that we need to go back to Utah. There are lots of, young girls that go to these camps up in the mountains, and that's where we're going to get your next wife, and he took the bait and went back to Utah, and as soon as they stepped off the bus, a couple of America's most wanted viewers saw them, called them in, and Elizabeth was rescued. When Thomas heard from a detective at the Sandy City Police Department whom he knew from high school that Elizabeth was alive and well in March 2003, Thomas immediately asked, where's the body? Because he could not believe the news. He describes the crimes Elizabeth had to endure in captivity as heinous and unthinkable. Now, Elizabeth is an advocate for other female victims of crime through her organization, the Elizabeth Smart Foundation which aims to bring hope and end the victimization and exploitation of sexual assault through education, healing and advocacy.